When I'm making games, I really like to embrace constraints. A lot of times I want to make a pixel art game that has sort of a retro feel, and so I want it to have a limited color palette, limited resolution, and I, I really want the aesthetic of the game to feel like it's an older game. In something like this example scene, using uh, Kenny's pixel art platformer pack, we can get close to that. I've got a low resolution game here. It's 480 by 270, I think. Um, when I render the game, it's locked to that resolution. We've scaled up the window. But if I do something like transition to a black screen, and transition back in, we move through the full RGB color space and that, that sort of takes us out of that retro game feel. So I wanted to find a way to snap the colors of the game to a specific palette. I later found out that that term is called color quantization. So in Godot, we can do this with a color rect. So I'm gonna add a color rect to my scene. And if it's a child of a plain node, not a node 2D, we can set its anchors to be full screen. Then we need to give it a material. I'm gonna create a new shader material. And then in that shader material, I'm gonna load a shader that I already have written. We'll take a look at the code in just a moment, but if you wanna get straight to that, there'll be a link down below with the source code. That shader takes a single parameter. It's a palette image, and that image needs to be one pixel tall and as wide as as many colors as you have. So for example, I have the original Pico 8 palette here. And if I drop that in, we are snapping all the pixels behind this color rect to the Pico 8 palette. If I load the game, we get the Pico 8 palette here. And then if I fade out using that same animation, now it steps through all of the colors to fade to the darkest color of the palette likewise fading back in. So now we're, we're adhering all of our colors on the screen or at least behind that color rect to the palette that we want. This is also helpful with particles. So if I turn the, let's rename this just so I know what it is. I usually call this palette shader. So if we turn off our palette shader, we can see these particles fade through the full RGB color space there's more particles in a few different places on the screen. We turn that palette shader back on and we zoom into these. We can see them kind of stepping through the available colors. So now we're able to use things like animated transitions, opacity, particle effects, all the different features and, and functionality of Godot, but our final game is still going to adhere to the rules of the pixel art that we want to display. Another place that this could be really useful is in something like a 3D scene. So in this case, I have the exact same scene loaded. It's just being displayed on this Game Boy here. So it's on the Game Boy model. I have another instance of this palette shader and we have loaded the Game Boy palette. So just to show I could do the same thing here, I could drop in the Pico 8 palette and snap to those colors. But in this case, we'd want it to stay as the Game Boy. And then this is just running another instance of that same scene. If I were to open up the scene here, uh, maybe grab something like this key. Oops, grab the key and move it down here. Go back to our Game Boy. And there's our key. So maybe this is useful for something like a security monitor in a 3D game or just playing something like this Game Boy. Now let's take a look at the source code for that that shader. So if we go to our palette shader and jump into the code here. So this is a canvas item shader. It takes a uniform sampler 2D argument, which is our palette file. And that is a one pixel tall image. Its width can be as many colors. So for example, if you have a 16 color palette, it'd be a 16 pixel wide image. Each pixel in that image is then a separate color of the palette. The default value here is transparent so that we don't render anything in our color rect when we aren't attempting to snap to a specific palette. This here is not an argument that we actually pass in. This is so that we can sample the screen texture. And then inside of our fragment shader, we are going to get the width of the palette. So in the case of the Pico 8 palette, this is gonna be 16 pixels. Then our color here, this is grabbing the current color from a specific position on the screen, the screen UV. So that might be something like 
uh, it's going to be a vector to position. And then UVs go from zero to one. That'll be relevant again in just a sec. We create a placeholder variable called new color. That'll be the color that we snap that pixel to. It starts off as just an empty vector four. So it's four values of 0.0. .0. Then for each color in the palette, we are going to get the width of a single pixel. Actually, this could probably go up here. We don't need to do that every single time. So this is the UV width. So we know in our palette that it's one pixel, but scaling from zero to one, we need to know uh, what is one divided by the palette size. So in this case, it's one divided by 16. And then we will get the X position for the UV. And that's gonna be the width of a single pixel in our UV times the current uh, index of our loop plus 0 0.5. And we do that just so that we are, um, the, the 0 0.5 is essentially making sure it's halfway inside of a pixel. It just helps us avoid false positives trying to be right on the edge of two different pixels. And then our Y value is always 0 0.5. I just like to define it here in a variable. So then we get the color from the palette and we use the texture function. We pass it the palette and then we get it a vector two with the two values that we just got just above. So you have our X our UVX and our UVY. Once we have that color from the palette, then we need to compare two distances. So these are vector four distances. This returns a float. So we're going to get the distance between the palette color we just selected and the color from the screen. So how close are those two colors comparing their RGB and alpha values? And then if that is less than the distance between whatever color we're currently holding on to in our new color variable and the screen color, then we assign the current palette color that we are looking at to new color. So we go through all the colors of the palette, snap each one to its closest color, and then here we are assigning the color of the pixel on the screen to whatever we have determined is the closest color from our palette. And then just to show how I typically get those palettes, I use low spec. Uh, let's go to palettes. Let's say I want a maximum of 16 colors. I want to sort by top downloads. I haven't used Sweetie 16 yet. So I will grab the one pixel version of that. We'll pull that into our palettes folder here. And let's apply Sweetie 16. And there is what our game would look like using that color palette. So this isn't the best way to apply different palettes to your game. If you want to have sort of a palette switcher, you can see in, in a lot of these examples, we lose colors where there isn't a close color or where the sort of white equivalent is the closest thing to some of the other colors in our original palette. Um, this can be helpful in something like taking the palette from the original artwork. So in this case, this Kenny palette is the palette for this artwork. There's not a lot of value in snapping the screen color to the color to the exact same color, but this does still apply the color stepping for things like the screen transitions and the particle effects. So if you want the code for this shader, uh, it will be below. Remember, all you have to do is add a color rect, make the color rect cover whatever part of the screen that you want. It'll only apply to things that are below the color rect. So again, if I, uh, here I'm putting an element above the color rect, these colors stay the same. They aren't affected by the shader. Um, all the information will be down below. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching. See ya.